Hi there, welcome to the workbench. I thought I'd do a short little video about um, replacing the uh, Rapido style uh, N-gauge couplings um, with these much finer DG auto couplings. Talking through how I do it. Uh, I've absolutely no idea whether you'll be able to see what we're going to do, but we're going to um, walk through the process of building a coupling and then fitting some to uh, to these Graham Farish press flows. So, uh, as it's, as you've seen, I've, I've done one already. Um, don't need a lot of tools. A uh, bit of super glue for fitting them later. Um, uh, a knife, a pair of tweezers, a pair of pliers, and uh, and a sharp pair of snips, which I use on this old pen knife uh, for cutting the uh, the etch. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's take a look. So uh, what you get with a DG coupling is effectively an etch of, uh, of these. I've just snipped this one out after, actually I've blackened them and then I've uh, snipped them out. I've uh, blackened them just using Carr's uh, black solution for uh, brass. Uh, nothing complicated. I've snipped them out and there's a bit more snipping to do, which I'll demonstrate. Uh, and it's basically a case of... Um, forming these up and on the underside you'll see there's half etched lines where the folds are uh, which make folding and forming very easy. Uh, this piece here on the back is the tongue which gives the delayed action and that fits through a small hole here in the centre and then you spread the feet a bit, you see the feet there underneath. So here's one I've made already uh, and you can see uh, that I've folded it up, uh, fitted the, the delay latch that's secured underneath by spreading the feet, okay? Uh, and I've trimmed this one already because I know the size I'm going to need for the Farish chassis. The other part is you need to form these, uh, the loops. Um, there's a, a, a jig, the DG jig, um, which you basically form by wrapping brass wire around it, or fossil bronze, I think it is. Um, and then the tail on here is a piece of uh, steel wire, which I just bend uh, through 90 degrees and then put a slightly lesser bend on here uh, and then solder it together. Now that sounds really fiddly but actually dead easy if you use solder paste and a pair of pliers. So effectively I've lay the the loop part flat on the bench. I uh, hold the tail of the steel in my pliers um, and then uh, I've dipped the, the steel into the, the um, Power flux, like uh, it's like a, a gel, if you like, or whatever, um, and then just touch the iron on it in place, and it just flows. It literally takes a second, so it's formed. So uh, I do those in batches. So I've got a few here. So uh, there's three, I think, here. I only need two. So um, I do those in in a batch. I'll say in you know, eight or nine pairs uh, at once, and then it means you can work through the the building process. Okay, so. Uh, let's take a look at um, putting this one together and then we'll have a look at fitting them onto the Farish wagon. OK, so I've, uh, I've sat down for this now. So if my voice sounds slightly different, it's because I'm slightly further away. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to trim the tail off the bottom. So I tend to put my thumb over when I'm cutting because of what I'm cutting. It, it stops the bits pinging off. <laughs> and of course... Uh, like most of us, I've got a dark carpet in here, so things just disappear. Uh, and then I use, I hold them, the part in the pliers and then use the snips just to trim up the edges and make sure they're, they're okay. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to do is to put a bend in it. So um, just past, there's like a, um, a tapered bit on here. So I put the pliers just past that and then just bend it into a, well, it's probably like... It's more than 45 degrees, but uh, probably not much more than that. Uh, and that's just to start the bend off. And the next thing then is now to uh, to trim some of the tags off here from uh, from the fret. But I'm actually, normally you just trim the tags off, but I'm going to trim the whole coupling because I know the chassis of this wagon needs it to be thinner. So it's just a case of snip, snipping off both sides. Being careful not to... Uh, take off the little ears and then if you hold the front in the pelt pliers and just gently bend the front down that needs to be at 90 degrees give or take and then put the pliers onto each of the uh, ends of that new bar that you formed that's the coupling face now really 
and we just tweak the ends so that they so you tweak them backwards so if you look at it from above can you see there they're tweaked backwards that stops them locking onto each other uh, and then with the coupling pin put between the pliers and then just bend back you're probably looking for about 20 odd degrees on that something like that I also tend to burnish it a bit with my nail because that's the, the part that the couplings rub up and if there's any roughness on there or if there's any of the blacking fluid left uh, it can they can hang up on that okay so when we take the the delay latch that we've bent already and we place that through the tiny little hole holding it with my finger so it doesn't fall out and this is why we need the blade we use the blade uh, this is an old blade, but uh, I prefer them because <laughs> I don't tend to cut myself on them. Um, push it between the forks of the, the tail, but I also then push it that way. That spreads, and wiggle it a bit, that spreads the legs a bit, so um, it's not going to go anywhere. Right, and check. It's going to be free moving if it isn't, and wiggle it about. Uh, one thing I've noticed in using these, there's a lot of uh, forgiveness in the way they're designed. I don't find them particularly difficult to set up, but you do need to chop the length of the delay latch to back to match however you've formed this coupling, because if it's too long, it interferes with, with the coupling next to it. So that'll do. Okay, now that's working nicely. I'm going to fold the layers down now that have got their little hole etched in them, because they're going to be the uh, what we're going to put the, the bar, the loop onto. Okay. Right, so now I've got two couplings ready for some loops some uh, to be fitted. So I'm going to grab one of these. These have been blackened as well. Uh, the blackening uh, solution doesn't adhere that well to uh, to the steel, but uh, it takes the shine off. So um, from coming from above the coupling, um, and then just with the, I tend to do it with the leg, the steel leg side, and poke it through one side. It's a little, it feels fiddly, it's not. Once you've done a few, it's dead easy. And you just tuck it into both sides. Now we've got, hopefully, free moving uh, coupling. Okay, so that one's just going to need a slight tweak on the bend. There we go. Okay. Right. I'll have to have a look at that latch in a minute. Of course, the first one I put together isn't quite right. We'll have a look at it in a second. Okay. Uh, and then the second one here. Okay, so that's what I was expecting the other one to do. Nice smooth motion. So let's just have a quick look at this one and see what's going on. I think this one's maybe a little bit tight, so I'm going to unping it. Um, so that the the mouth of it at this end is a, just a touch too tight for the for the coupling. So I'm just gonna. In fact, to tell you what we'll do, we'll use the other one. That's why I had a spare. Okay. So I tend to make more loops than I need because I find that there's a bit of variability in the loops. Um, and of course, it's another thing that could go flinging off into the carpet. So um, always worth having a few spares. There's nothing worse than getting into a job like this and then finding that uh, you're held up by having lost one or something. So yeah, there we go, that's moving nicely. Okay, so we've got two working couplings now, you see that? Okay, so the next job is to uh, to fit them to the wagon. So let's take a look at that. So um, Farish wagons, well, all engage wagons have different methods for, uh, for attaching the Rapido, but on, these press flows, it's literally this uh, piece here, clips, unclips. So I stick the knife underneath and just twist it slightly, it pings off. Now I fit my DG couplings at the uh, the base of a buffer beam. Now assuming the buffers are fl roughly flush with the base of the buffer beam, i.e. the bo body of the buffer, then I find that's good enough. Um, and then I can do a final tweak in the height of them by adjusting the the shank if you like of it but um yeah i don't overthink it too much and i find as i said it uh, before there's a fair bit of um they're quite forgiving of, of setup so you can see now that i've taken the 
the couplings off I've got two flat surfaces and you can see now also there's the ridges either side of where that's come off so that's why I've chopped them down so they're fitting there so simply just give them a rub where you get any of the blacking fluid off that's been left behind a bit of um, I tend to use this gel super glue it sets slightly slower allows you to adjust um, whilst you're doing it so this is where the tweezers are going to come in I use them to push down okay so I'm lining this up it's got to be about central um, and what you're aiming for is the back of the um, the drop down eyes if you like uh, need to be the back of that needs to be roughly in line with the buffer beam otherwise you'll get the loop not working properly um, and hopefully you'll have then the, the buffer face will be very close to the position of the buffers so what you find is actually by using these couplings you end up with a much better close coupling effect amongst your stock as well so not only are they much finer looking much and much improvements and massive improvements over those uh, easy shunts that dapple offer um but also that uh, you've got uh, a closer um rake you know things look more realistic if the things are closer together so okay so just hold down on a second with the, with the gel type okay and there you have it uh couplings fitted um and if you need to make any final tweaks or adjustments you can adjust the height of them slightly by um once the the glue set just tweaking so if you look these two are gonna these two slide together quite nicely and this end isn't doing so then what i'll do is i'll turn this wagon around and check so which tells me it's this coupling here and it feels like it's a bit low it could also be that there's a bit of roughness on the the height there um and that's what's causing it but you can just make small adjustments by taking a pair of tweezers or pliers and just adjusting the body of that coupling up and down ever so slightly um until you get them uh, um, coupling reliably okay uh, in my experience they require a lot less force to couple than rapidos so actually even when shunting you know it's really easy to pick them up uh, a rake of them up or even just one wagon up so yeah massive improvements all around uh, i hope that was interesting um and has given you a bit of an encouragement to have a go yourself it's not rocket science it's fiddly a little bit fiddly um and there's a little bit of soldering, but these are things that, you know, as modelers, we need to uh, to practice and to learn, because if we don't, we're not improving and uh, we're not moving forward. So, I mean, if you're watching this, you're probably the sort that uh, likes to uh, improve ready to run models. And I think these couplings go a long way to making a massive difference to the way uh, N-Gage feels. So, uh, so give them a go. Uh, and, uh, and by all means, let me know what you think. Any questions, leave them as comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you thought this would be worthwhile, then please do uh, to like, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, you know, all that usual stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.